This is Don Gossett. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. The Apostle Paul declared, I am not ashamed of Jesus nor his gospel. Today, Don Gossett shares how the words, not ashamed, became his watchword, enabling him to overcome a man-fearing spirit. The Bible says the fear of man brings a snare, but he who puts his trust in the Lord shall be safe. You too never need be ashamed of the Lord Jesus, and Don shares his witness how this truth can change your life. Now here's radio teacher and friend Don Gossett with Not Ashamed. Well, as I continue this sharing my testimony of Not Ashamed, when I was a teenager, I worked on a job with unsaved men to take a stand for the Lord Jesus, even the very act of bowing my head and praying over my food was a big challenge for my timid soul. And the very first verse I memorized in my Christian walk was Romans 1.16. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it's the power of God unto salvation to everyone who believes. Hear those two words, not ashamed. They became my watchword, my enabling to be free from the fear of man. And now many years have passed since I began to employ this truth, and I wish to reaffirm my testimony. I'm not ashamed of Jesus nor his gospel. Now, as I share this teaching of not ashamed, I want to give you 14 reasons why I'm not ashamed of Jesus nor his gospel. I'm not ashamed of Jesus as my Savior and Lord, for the master commanded in Matthew 10, 32, 33, Whosoever shall confess me before men, him will I confess also before my Father in heaven. But whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father in heaven. Thank God, not ashamed to confess Jesus. And I'm not ashamed of the healing power of Christ. For Jesus said, These signs shall follow them that believe. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. I've shared here in recent days about how a wealthy man approached a radio station manager where my broadcasts were on the air, and he said to this manager, If Don Gossett will refrain from teaching about speaking about healing for the Lord, I will give him the money, or I'll give the money to the station to pay for his radio bill in full. Well, I want to assure you that I... I'm not ashamed of the healing power of Christ, and I'm glad that he has said it, and I and you and I can embrace it, that the believers shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Praise God. Now, sometimes I've had some criticism about my practice of leading you in speaking the words, praise the Lord. And I'm not ashamed to praise the Lord. I'm not ashamed to praise the Lord. Why? Because the Lord says in Psalm 50:23. Whoso offers praise glorifies me. And you know something else I want to share as a personal testimony? I'm not ashamed I'm a tither and a cheerful giver. Paul said in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, Each of you must make up your own mind how much to give. But don't feel sorry that you must give and feel that you're forced to give. For God loves people who love to give. And the good old King James Version says, God loves a cheerful giver, and I trust that you're not ashamed that you're a tither and a cheerful giver. Now, here's a subject that's a bit sensitive to say, but I'm not ashamed. I abstain from sex before marriage. Hebrews 13, 4 says, Marriage is honorable in all, and the bed undefiled but whoremongers and adulterers God will judge. You see, the catastrophe is, I grew up in a family of people who were adulterers, people who were uh, employing sex as a way of life. I mean, I'm talking about my dad, about uncles, about aunts, about people who are very close to me. And so it was not easy for me to take a opposite stand to be able to say from my own heart that I abstained from sex before marriage, not because I was trying to be a nice little guy, but because I believed what the Bible said. And thank God may this also motivate your heart. And I'm not ashamed of the Great Commission. Jesus said, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every people group. And that's our challenge. And see, I'm not ashamed of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. 
Paul wrote, Now concerning spiritual gifts, I will not have you be ignorant. And I'm not ashamed to cast out devils in Jesus' name. For he said, These signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. By the grace of God I've had the delight, the holy calling to be used by God to cast devils out of many people that were bound, possessed by them. I've shared with you about the young man I picked up as a hitchhiker, and I immediately asked him the question, What do you think of Jesus? And he responded, said, I'm so glad you're talking to me about religion. I said, Fellow, I'm not talking about religion. I'm talking about relationship with Jesus Christ. And so I began to share with him the truth of God's word about the wonder of grace by which we are saved. And now the young man was not receptive. He only said to me, well, I've always desired to be saved. I've always wanted to know Christ as my Savior, but I believe I was predestined to be lost forever. I believe that I was predestined to be a candidate for hell forever. And I asked him why he believed that. He said, I was taught that back in the place where I went to Sunday school, that some were predestined to be saved, others were predestined to be lost, and I became convinced I was one of those who was predestined to be lost. I said to him from the depth of my heart, I said, listen, you're being deceived by a wicked devil. And I said, I want to help you be re free from this. For Jesus said, and these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. That young man persisted in denying Christ as the Savior and Lord. And just as we arrived at his destination, I reached over and put my hand on his shoulder and I said, Hey guy, you're not here by chance or accident. God, by his love and mercy, has caused you to meet me today and give you the invitation to receive Christ. He said, Oh, thank you but somehow I just can't be saved. I just can't be saved. I saw the picture clearly. Here was a young man who wanted salvation. He was not just a casual person on the subject. He was very earnest that he had been predestined to be lost forever. And I gave him a couple of free scriptures on the fact that salvation is all-inclusive. And then I saw the picture very clearly in the Spirit. Here was a young man who desired salvation, but the devil had deceived him to believe it was not for him. And I simply put my hand on his shoulder again, and I commanded the power of the evil one to be broken from his life. I spoke aggressively in Jesus' name for that young man to be free from the demonical control that possessed his life. And I literally, in Jesus' name, took the authority of Christ and cast out the demons from that young man. And when I did so, he suddenly turned to me, and there were tears in his eyes, and he said, Let's pray together. Well, I prayed with him. I led him to the saving grace of Christ, and he was joyously saved, received Christ. And after I shared with him about 15 or 20 minutes about how to follow on to be a true follower of Jesus, his heart was very open, very receptive. You see, the contrast was the devil power over his life had been broken. Now, in my ministry as an evangelist, I've employed this same truth many times. I've done it with small groups where I've seen people desire salvation. And thank God as I broke the power of the wicked one over their lives, they received Christ and were born again. I've seen this happen before massive audiences like in India and Africa and many other places. When I've taken my authority and commanded the power of the wicked one to be broken over people who were reje rejecting Christ, and praise God, the situation was all reversed. The majority of those people all were set free from the power of the wicked one, and thank God they became born-again Christians. I rejoice in this. So I say I'm not ashamed to cast out devils in Jesus' name. For the Master had said, And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. Well, there are many more truths that I want to emphasize about being not ashamed. And one of the climaxing scriptures in my own walk with the Lord 
is Romans chapter 10, verse 11. Hear these words. As it is written, Whosoever believes in him shall not be ashamed. Did you grasp those words? It is written, Whosoever believes in Jesus shall not be ashamed. Well, praise God, if you believe in Jesus, then you can be saved. You can be redeemed from the kingdom of darkness. Your life can be changed as my life was changed. I praise God that those years ago when I was so timid and so bound by the fear of man, and yet the Bible says the fear of man brings a snare, but whosoever puts his trust in the Lord shall be saved. Now, I want to encourage you to employ this teaching on a CD we have. Also, I want to invite you to request a beautiful scroll, 11 by 17, a scroll that gives you this clear teaching of why you can be not ashamed. What a glorious privilege it is to be free from this fear of man, this fear of people's opinions. And so I pray that as not ashamed became my watchword many years ago and enabled me to be free from this fear of man, the same truth can be yours. And you'll be able to say it, I'm not ashamed of Jesus nor his gospel. Thank God that's the reality that can be yours. Father, I ask for every person who this day is under the, the wicked one, the devil, who has keep them deceived by cause them to reject Jesus. I pray for release from each one of these captives. The Lord, you will break the strongholds of the wicked one, and that their hearts will be receptive, that they will receive Jesus Christ and no longer be ashamed of knowing him. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh, hallelujah. I think those two words have been such a wonderful watchword for my life. Not ashamed. Not ashamed of the gospel. Not ashamed that I know Jesus. Not ashamed any iota. Wherever I am, whoever I'm with, I'm not ashamed of Jesus. And I pray that'll be your testimony too. And you will be one that God can minister and bless abundantly. Hallelujah. So let's just keep our heart open to God's truth and rejoice in his mercy. And now in gratitude that you have been set free, that you can say with the Apostle Paul, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it's the power of God unto salvation to everyone who believes. Thank God you can say, I believe, and I'm not ashamed. Let's rejoice in that by praising this dear Lord, and let's praise him ten times. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, 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 hallelujah. Don Gossett has shared how Romans 1.16 was the very first scripture he memorized. These words, not ashamed, can become your watchword, enabling you to be free from the fear of men. Don has a helpful CD on this subject and will be sent to you in appreciation of your love gift for Bold Bible Missions. Ask for the CD, Not Ashamed, when you write Post Office Box 75120, White Rock, B.C., B4A-OB1, or Box 2, Blaine, Washington, 98231. Don wants to motivate you never to be ashamed of Jesus nor his gospel. Write Don today in Canada, Box 75120, White Rock, B.C., V4A, OB1, or Box 2, Blaine, Washington, 98231.